Back in Eugene, Oregon, as promised, the next event on the track, the men's 10,000 meter final. Suleiman Nyambui has the championship record from 42 years ago. Sam Chalanga with the collegiate record. 24 athletes, 25 laps of the track. And we will do our best to set the field for you once they get themselves sorted out. Two groups. They'll stay in their little packs through the first full turn, and then they will cut for the pole position. We, they're showing you the list of competitors as we go along. Three different groups of competitors. 24 athletes total, 12 from each of the East and West regionals held less than two weeks ago. And no surprise, Wesley Kip too goes right to the front. Yeah, plenty of front runners in, in here, but you know, you can only usually be one front runner in the 10,000. Wesley Kip two of IOS 8 happens to be the one right now. Vincent Kiprop of Alabama, we've seen him do plenty of front running in his career down at the SEC. So they are sifting themselves out pretty well. Early on, 24 laps remaining in this 10,000 meter final. As we come back to the men's 10,000 meters, coming up on 22 laps remaining, it continues to be sophomore Wesley Kiptu of Iowa State via Mariquette, Kenya. We will also see him on Friday in the 5,000 meters. He was the NCAA indoor 5,000 champion back in March when the meet was held in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Also the NJCAA cross-country champion when he's at Colby Community College in Kansas back in 2019. Well, Dwight, this, everybody expects this to be a race, almost almost a carbon copy of the cross-country championships. We've got a chance to see Kip to win that indoor 5K, and then two days later, in Stillwater, Oklahoma, Kip Tu just went out, led for about 6,000 yep, meters, yep. had, a, had a really big lead, and the hills got to him, and Connor Mance was able to pass him in that last 2,000 meters, overtake him for that win. But talking to Ed Eyestone this morning, I said, I said Ed, you know, what, what kind of strategy do you put in place? And he said, you know, you don't know what Kip to, you know, how fast he's going to go, but you do know he's going to go to the front. But, you know, he, he puts together a, a 62 second first lap and then a 205, 800 meters, and he gets these big leads. But it's a little bit cooler here tonight. Uh, didn't seem like he, he went quite as hard as he normally would, but he, he won the triple at the Big 12 championships, the five, the 10, and the steeplechase. A scheduling standpoint, thanks in large part to his coach, Dennis Shaver, and his event coach, Todd Lane, and the head coach, Mike Holloway of Florida. Of course, they're all in the same conference. Uh, so, but a little cooperation there with regard to this young man's chances to make the Olympic team. 25-10 for Javon Harrison in that fifth round. No improvement. He still is ahead by over a foot with his 27 one and three quarter mark from earlier in the competition. So with uh, 20 and a half laps remaining, let's step aside, pay a few bills, and we'll come back with more of our coverage of the 10,000 meters here at the NCAA Outdoor Championships. Back to the 10,000 meters, 17 and a half laps remaining and not much has changed. It continues to be sophomore Will Wesley Kiptu of Iowa State leading with Connor Mance, the junior from BYU, following closely behind. There's like 14 runners in that lead pack out of the 24 that started. And amongst those in about 12th position or so is Gilbert Boyd of Arkansas. And you can kind of see on this upper left part of his singlet the sticker, which is the silhouette of the just recently departed John McDonald, the legendary coach at the University of Arkansas, who passed away on Monday evening at the age of 82. This whole Arkansas team here in Eugene with heavy hearts, the soul of that amazing program that started making major moves in indoor, outdoor track and cross country in the 80s. Look at this incredible resume from this coach.
40 NCAA championships, the first team to ever win the Triple Crown, which is winning the cross country, indoor and outdoor track in the same season, 30 times the National Coach of the Year. Five times they pulled off that NCAA Triple Crown, countless SEC Triple Crowns. Just, they broke the mold when they made this coach. Inspired a lot of great athletes, had an amazing amount of Olympians from all over the world go through that program. He will be missed. He is loved. I mean, he is, Dwight, the definition of that program. I mean, you think Arkansas track and field is for all that Lance Harder has done and what Chris Buckham's doing now. It all started, it's all on the foundation of what John McDonald did. Came over from Ireland, took over that team and won again and again, and you mentioned the patch. Uh, even that from respect from one of his former athletes, uh, Frank O'Mara designed that for the team. Um, they've had to work quick. They made a sticker for today, and they're working on a patch uh, that will be uh, sewn on to all the athletes' um, jerseys for tomorrow. It will be on the women's jersey as well, as Lance Harder, the coach of the women's team at Arkansas. He worked alongside Coach Mack for I think he told me 17 years would go out and run with him on their lunch hours, just picking his brain and talking about how he assembled his team and learning from him. And Chris Buckham had said he was a wonderful resource uh, to have for the program over the last 13 years since he took over. And whenever he had a question, he was there with an answer and he was always supportive of his, of his team. And, and as great a coach as he was, I think he retired guys into something that he loved even more, which was on his farm, a big ranch, uh, just a across the border in Oklahoma with 2,600 acres and countless head of cattle. And, and he just, he was a gentleman rancher after he got under track and field. And for many years after he stepped aside as the head coach, you would see him in every one of the indoor and outdoor meets during the year up until just the last couple of years when he started to have some failing health, but always an inspiration, not only to the coaching staff, but also the athletes that he could oversee and impart a little bit of wisdom. You know, everybody would, it's like the old E.F. Hutton commercials. When Coach McDonald speaks, you would listen. Well, guys, you know, you get people who come into this sport and they're good and they're outstanding, but he changed the game. He was a guy who came in and changed the way that Arkansas trained, uh, changed the way that they recruited athletes. And, you know, he's, he, he, I remember I read quotes and he said before he'd won anything, he thought, am I ever going to win anything? And he's like, it's kind of strange to think back you know, look at it at that point. But he said, that's how tough it was. But, you know, he started to impart the 100 mile weeks for these college students, which was absolutely unheard of. You know, to put in 100 miles as a distance runner a week was, was unheard of. But he started doing that, but he kept notes on every single workout, pace charts on every single athlete. And so it was all stats and scientific driven. And he said that was the way that he had that success is he knew exactly what one guy had done from the day previous. And he's even been described as John Wooden-ish, Dwight. And I know you can certainly appreciate that from your time in Southern California. Yeah, no question. He also had the wisdom to have balance in his teams. As great distance runners as he had and middle distance runners, he realized he had to have sprinters, he had to have field event people, he had to have multi-eventers. And slowly but surely, he had such balance, and that was what really allowed them to win titles in indoor and outdoor track. You can't just do it with distance runners, and he introduced that balance, and it was almost impossible to recruit against him for a lot of years in the 80s and 90s because everybody wanted to be a part of a national championship team. I was a part of one at UCLA my freshman year. There's nothing like being a contender and being a, a, a point score on a national championship team and a lot of athletes got an opportunity to do so because of coach McDonald. and to kind of meld what you guys both said about coach wood and dwight it, it, it took him a while but boy once he got on top uh, he, he just never lost again and wooden was like that it, the, the first few years in westwood were not great uh, he was just building that program and then once they won one there were there were the 10 in the seven in the row and coach uh, mcdonald certainly uh, was like that when he built that program and as you said so many distance titles i mean he used the whole 
team, but it was it was the whole thing built to this meet. He ran cross country runners and won there, and that fed into how they play, they ran indoor and how they competed indoor, which set them up for outdoor and as many great distance runners as he had. My goodness, what are the countless number of long jumpers and triple jumpers that, that for a decade they own both those sports? Yeah, no question about it. No. The balance was 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 great. So we have. 11 laps remaining in this 10,000 meters, and we've had a change in the front. Alex Masai of Hofstra now leading with 11 laps remaining in the 10,000 meters. We're back in Eugene, Oregon, with nine and a half laps remaining in the men's 10,000 meters. And Wesley Kiptu, the sophomore from Iowa State, has regained the lead. That is Robert Brandt of Georgetown right there checking him on his right shoulder. Still lots of athletes with an opportunity to win and score for their teams. They're right around meet record pace, a meet record that has been held for 42 years by Suleiman Niambui of UTEP. It's a 10,000 meter Olympic medalist back in the day. Ideal conditions for 10,000 meter running here in Eugene as they come up with eight laps remaining. This front group is at least a dozen with an opportunity, depending on where they are in their race plan, to challenge for the eight scoring spots. This is the only running final of this first day on the men's side. It'll be the same situation for the women tomorrow when they contest the 10,000 meters. So Kip 2 has only not led for one lap plus of this 10,000 meters, which is his style. A triple winner at the conference meet, the 5, the 10, and the steeple. But he's out there doing all the work. As Adrian Wildschut of Florida State, the senior, in third position. Seven laps remaining. Now reinserting him into the himself into the mix, Connor Mance of BYU. He was in second place for a good dozen laps, and then dropped back. Now has reemerged and moved himself into third position. And Dan, I'm a little surprised to not see Vincent Kiprop a little bit closer to the front. He's certainly in this front group. But it's a little bit of restraint to see the Alabama senior with so much restraint and staying away from the front. Well, this this weather is great for these distance runners, but this is chilly for the guys coming up from the south, you know, especially what they've experienced all spring long at Texas A&M and the different places. But you know, think about Dwight, just how good is Wesley Kip to? And, Everybody's challenging him. He's got his trademark gloves on, but uh, indoors, Kip 2 goes 404 in the mile. You know, 748 in the 3K, 5K indoors, 1323, 1321 outdoors, and 2737 for the 10K. So this guy, he's, he's toying with them. All right, we are going to step aside, and when we come back, we will show you the finish of this men's 10,000 meters. Don't go anywhere. It could be a hot one. Back in Eugene, Oregon, coming up on just three laps remaining in the men's 10,000 meters with about 11 runners near the front and certainly capable of finishing and scoring for their teams. But let's step aside for a moment, go down to John Anderson, who has our long jump winner, LSU's Javon Harrison. Thank you, Dwight. Yeah, Javon Harrison, NCAA title number five. Tell me what was good about your performance today. Today, my performance, uh, I think I got on the, on the board a lot well. I worked on my runway uh, when we first got here, so I was able to get on the board properly. And I was able to run down the runway the way I wanted to. And the second thing I want to know is, what are you going to do with all this time? You don't have to run over here to high jump, April. I'm going to go back to the hotel, get some treatment, and just relax my body for high jump on Friday. Right, and all day tomorrow, you just get to relax, dude. What do you, I mean, you've got a switch game. How are we filling the time? 
Yeah, we, we got the Xbox down here, the PS5. We, we got some stuff we can do, but I'm really going to focus on getting treatment, getting my legs right, and staying off my legs as much as possible so I can get ready for Friday. Very good. Congratulations on today. We'll see you in the next one, and hopefully title number six for you. Javon Harrison. I appreciate it. All right, Dwight, dramatic conclusion, up to you. All right, John. Well, Javon Harrison usually is contesting the long jump and the high jump at the same time. I don't know what he's going to do all that time in between. As we're coming up to two laps remaining, and now seriously 10 athletes with a chance at the victory, led by Alex Masai of, ha of Hofstra. And in the mix there is Patrick Deaver of Tulsa, Connor Mance of BYU. There's a lot of run left in several of these guys have been running right around meet record pace. Outstanding conditions right now, cool and post rain air. Well, there you get a shot. Both guys in frame there, Connor Mance in the white from BYU, but uh, Adrian Vilskuch, the German, from Florida State who finished second at the cross country championships. He's still up there in the mix and keep your eye on the Colorado State, Eric Hamer. He was second indoors in that 5,000 meters. All right, they're coming to the bell and they're starting to wind it up about five or six athletes with a lot of run left in them. And these guys are gonna break a 42 year old meet record held by Suleiman Nuyambui of UTEP who ended up winning an Olympic medal in the 10,000 meters. Mance with a lot of run left in him. And there's Brandt of Georgetown who is right there as well. Nur of Northern Arizona and that great cross country program. Deaver of Tulsa. A little over 150 meters to go with four athletes right there with plenty of kick. Mance has had to do the most work. Brand has been smart and stayed in second position. Now Deaver, the brick, comes in on the inside. It's going to be Deaver of Tulsa who's going to steal this thing in the last straightaway. Mance finishing second. And Nur of North, Northern Arizona gets third. A new meet record by Patrick Deaver breaking a 42-year-old meet record. In fact, several of the athletes under that old record. Well, look at, look at that time. He smashes his personal best by over 40 seconds in the process. I'm still counting how many are under the old meet record. Eight so far. There you see Connor Mance, he just faded in that last 125 and he moved to the outside thinking he's going to push Brand out. But Deaver took that lane on the inside and just ran away with it. Those guys ran well together the last 12, 13 laps. They certainly couldn't have done it if the group hadn't been that large. But nice running by Patrick Deaver. I think he's as surprised as, as we are. After 42 years, 10 athletes breaking the old meet record and Patrick Deaver, the best of all of them with Connor Mance and Nur following. Four by four is next. 10,000 meters to the tape. Patrick Deaver comes through and wipes a 40 year old record off the NCAA books and breaks it by 20 seconds in a stacked and loaded field. A phenomenal performance by the young man from the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. There's no S at the end of that. It's just the Tulsa Golden Hurricane and Patrick with us now. Uh, Patrick, that is a loaded field. You knew most of these guys. You've run against them through cross country. You knew Kip 2 would go out. So tell me how you decided you were going to run this thing. Um, so. Yeah, uh, I discussed it with my coach beforehand, and we, we were going to see how Kip 2 went out and um, kind of uh, judged where we were going to sit based on how many people went with him. And from the start, it appeared that I think everyone was going to go with him, so it was basically you either go with him or you're out the back door, so it was a bit of a, a no-brainer. Um, and then, yeah, just try and get on the rail and relax as much as possible. 
and now you come down and there's there's a, the bell lap and 200 meters to go and you still got six guys with you yeah i couldn't <laughs> i was looking up at the big screen and i couldn't i couldn't believe how many people were still there just with the pace we were on it's it's just a testament to how strong the ncaa, NCAA is this year so yeah it was there was a lot of like moving moving around and a bit of jostling in the park and it was just a case of like keeping calm and just i just really wanted to save something for the home straight because i I figured if it comes down to that, I need to be ready, so. It worked out perfectly. We're going to let you go take a victory lap and, yeah. and, and cool down after 26.40 and let you get your arms, your head around that one. Yeah. Cheers, mate. No, no problem. Thank you. All right, congratulations to Patrick Deaver. Obliterating record, which was by a man who won a silver medal in the 5,000 meters, not the 10,000 meters. And we'll be back with the 4x4s next.